Okay, this is a video about calculating the definite integral of a function from a graph. So we are going to be calculating the definite integral of this function, the pictured function f of x, from negative 3 to 7. And how do we write that? First of all, we have our integral symbol, and the lower limit is negative 3, and the upper limit is 7, which means that we are calculating more or less uh, the area that's under the curve of this function uh, up until the the x-axis. So the area in between f and the x-axis, except if f is below the x-axis, it counts that area as negative. So we'll get to that later. So we're calculating this of whoops of this function f of x uh, dx. Okay, so this is what we want to do based entirely on this graph. And so the way we'll do this is that we'll just actually using traditional geometry, we'll calculate the area of this. Even though this isn't an object that we recognize, we can split it up into objects that we recognize. So first of all, let's realize that we're starting at negative 3, so we start right here. And I'll put a little dotted line there. So that's where we're going to start and where are we going to end we're going to end at 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we're going to end right here. Now, the way to look at this, the way to do this task in this case, is to look for rectangles and triangles. So what I see right here is that I want to calculate the area in between this dotted line and this, these lines and the x-axis. And I see that I can split this up First of all, I can get a little square here. So what's the area of this square alone? Well, it's 1 by 1, so I get 1, area 1 from that square. Now, that part was relatively easy. How do we do this part from negative 2 to 0? Well, it's not a triangle, and it's not a rectangle, but if I split it up like this, oops, with this dotted line, now I have a rectangle and a triangle. What's the area of this rectangle? Well, it's 1 times 2, so this is 2. And what's the area of this rectangle? Well, remember the area of a triangle, I'm sorry, what's the area of this triangle? Remember the area of a triangle is given by 1 half uh, base times height. So what is the height of this triangle? It starts right here and it goes up 1, 2, 3, 4. And the base of this triangle is has length 2, 1, 2. So 4 times 2 is 8. And then the 1 half gives us area 4 here. OK, let's keep going. How do I split up this part? Well, I realize that if I draw a dotted line right here, I now, again, have a rectangle and a triangle. What is the area of this rectangle? Well, its height is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and its width is 2, so its area is 10, 5 times 2. And similarly to the previous triangle, this triangle has base 2 and height 5, so 2 times 5 is 10, and we have half that, which makes this 5. All right, moving on, I want to now calculate the area um, between f of x and this dotted line and the x-axis. So I should split it along here. And so now what do I have? I have a triangle and a rectangle. I'll do the rectangle first. Its length is 2, and its width is 2. Or sorry, its width is 1, so 1 times 2 gives its area 2. And this triangle has base 2 and height 2. And so I get 1 half 2 times 2, which is 2. All right. So now I've calculated all the areas that I need, and I just need to figure out exactly what this integral is. Well, the integral counts all of the area above the x-axis as positive. So I get 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 10 plus 5. And I have to subtract off all the area that's below the x-axis. So I have a 2 and a 2. So 2 plus 
2. Oops, that's a 1, 2 plus 2. And that's exactly my answer. Okay, so I get, for this part, I get 22. Is that right? Yes, 9, okay, that's 22 minus 4. And so my answer is 18. So something to notice here is that if we had stopped at x equals 1, 2, 3, 4, then I just would have wanted these areas and everything would have been positive and I would have gotten just the 22. Uh, and likewise, if I had gone from 4 to 7, I would have gotten a total of just the negative area here. I would have gotten a minus 4. And notice, we didn't include this last triangle here because we wanted to stop at x equals 7. That's what this upper limit here, that's what this number 7 indicates here, is that we start at negative 3 and we stop at 7. And that's all for this example.